Hi everyone, Soren here. So I usually get asked how I compose music and today I want to show you guys how I usually go about it. And uh, I have to record this on my phone so just bear with me. I'll try and make it as clear as I can. So first I have to, I have the file previously written so I'm going to load it. Is this one. Yep. So this is Finale. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a music notation software and allows me to enter the notes in as I want them. Uh, and then here we control what kind of note it is, whether it's a whole note, half note, quarter note, etc. Here are some of our tools, the staff tool, selection tool. This is the playback feature, which I really like. Um, what else? There's layers here, which correspond to these colors here, the red represents the second layer and this is my uh, dynamics tool, my articulation tool then these are um, crescendos and decrescendos and the like um, I can change the document view from here so I can uh, scroll across the page and this is the song that I've written um, can't focus on two screens at once. Um, yeah, so how you go about writing music is right now I have my keyboard attached to this through a MIDI uh, controller. And right now, if you see that I was pressing buttons on my keyboard and I can enter notes in on this program. And then if I want to say enter a quarter note, I pick the quarter note and say I want a C. I can hit C and I get C. And right now since I started playing it loaded the sound libraries I had in, uh, picked or by itself. So if I go back, I can play the middle C. And it plays it back to me as I hit it. And then suppose I want um, eighth notes instead now. I can play chords now. So this allows me to really quickly enter in notes. Um, I don't really have to worry about what chords or anything because I can just play them on my keyboard. The most frustrating part with this is that I still have to pick um, the length of the note so it's kind of slow but other than that it's pretty good um, oh so to show you guys the playback feature before I show you my song and how the sound libraries work uh, I will insert a few measures here say eight measures and then let's make twinkle twinkle little star I need a half note. Got it wrong. That happens a lot. Got it wrong again. I don't remember the song. Never, not a good sign. So if, if you know, it's playing it back to me with the sound of a real piano. That's because right now I'm using uh, virtual instruments, which I've previously loaded in. I'll explain that in a moment. Also, it's blue because I had layer 4 uh, clicked here. I should go back to layer 1 to avoid confusion. But to demonstrate the playback feature up here, if I go back to the beginning, measure 1, I can press play. And it's playing it back to me. this quieter it's pretty late in the night and then another thing to note I can like rewind as it's playing or fast forward also while it's playing I can also pl play on my keyboard 
that repetitive noise is me playing on the keyboard right now. So it's playing both what I've written on the sheet and also what I'm playing live. And this I use often so I, I can, uh, like this is how I layer my music basically. I write something and then I can, I experiment with my keyboard to see if other things will work well with that or not. So uh, enough of that. Let's get rid of all of this. I don't have... It's difficult holding my cell phone with one hand. Uh, let me think. I'm going to put this down for a sec. Okay, trying to delete all these unneeded measures, which for some reason it doesn't want to let me. Ah. Okay, we're back. So, yes, now onto my virtual instruments. So, um, basically, uh, a few years ago, I bought East West Quantum Leap sound libraries, and they're basically libraries of virtual instruments. So for example, in channels 1 through 16, I've loaded this library. Uh, currently, I'm using, uh, from the instruments, I've picked electric pianos. And there's a virtual instrument called Piano Strings 3, and it sounds like this. I make that a bit louder. Right, and then I can uh, load multiple uh, instruments into this. There's no limit. It's just how how much uh, hard how my, my computer hardware can handle. And then here I can tweak uh, the settings of how the notes played. So this is how sharply it's played. And then this is uh, how much it's held. And I have no clue what these three do. I never use them. And this is the reverb, which I like to use a lot. And the best way I can describe it is that it makes the sound more wet. For example, if we turn it off, and if I turn it on, you can hear that the sound has like fills the the available space much more. Um, so yes, the reason I have four of the same thing loaded is because this allows me greater control over the volumes because if you notice here the volume is different as compared to say here as well as here as well as here and uh, I want to control these volumes because just these um, like uh, piano and double piano and like mezzo piano and whatever they're called I don't really know that much theory but the uh, dynamic controls in finale aren't accurate enough for my needs so I want more control over that, and that's why I did this. Um, what else? What else is important here? Oh, so these are the actual libraries themselves. This is a Symphonic Orchestra Platinum, and it has most of the uh, standard instruments you'd find in an orchestra. My favorite is strings, and like there's cellos, violas, which I use for this. Um, no, that's in a different library. That's in this one. I loaded it in a different channel just to stay more organized. This is my strings channels. So uh, this is my viola. If you notice, I have reverb on with some volume certain set to some parameters because that's how I wanted it to sound. And then I have these are the microphone positions, and depending on what they are, the sound it sounds different. Um, what else? So yeah, there is many, many instruments on here with very, like different effects and like different playing styles. So the challenge with using virtual instruments to play back something is you have to find out which one it is specifically you want and then tweak that and then sometimes combine them and then sometimes they don't have what you want. So you have to improvise. And it's really like a game. It's basically a video game trying to f get it to do what you want it to do. So when I bought uh, these libraries, I had like eight licenses I had one for this one which is choirs and this all this has a feature where I can actually build like words into a choir uh, let me let me see can I find it 
Oh, wait, wait, I'm getting closer. Let's just say I load this. It takes a while because it's a big library. And it's loading. I'm running out of recording time too. I have to go faster. Okay, this isn't that important because this song doesn't use any choir with words. So I'm just going to go straight to playing back the song for you guys and then showing you how Finale plays it. So yes, I will go back to the beginning, hit play. Finale will start playing. And then as it's playing, I will show you the... Uh, first I'll make it a little quieter. And I will also show you the uh, ver how the virtual instruments are responding. So right now in channel 1, if you look down here, you'll notice that this is playing what's written here. 15, if I showed it correctly. For example, if we look at the top line, we see that a B flat's coming. And oh, I moved it out of the screen again. Maybe here. Okay, so that shows you how like channel 1 and 2 are being played, and this is right now channel 1 as determined by this thing here. Channel 1, I don't know if you guys can see it clearly. And uh, right now, it's just the piano playing. Uh, I don't think these slurs actually do anything, I just put them on to look more authentic. Um... Notice the crescendos actually do work with uh, the uh, virtual instruments. If I focus in on this. Oh, there it is. And uh, the reason I did this is I want each note to be played at a different volume, that's why it's PPPPPP. Oh, there comes in the viola now. Where is it? Ah, there it is. And if I move out, oh, second channel. Oh, this is a mixture. I don't really know how to use that either. Never really do. Okay, so here's my viola playing now, right? And then just to give you an example of what happens when I change this. Okay, so it's at 412.54. Let's say I increase to the end. You see, so now it's being held for a lot longer. So I had it somewhere like uh, 412.54. Okay, so that's close enough. Uh, yeah. And I can change the volume here too. And the reverb. And uh, my computer doesn't like it when I do that. Sometimes it crashes on me. Happened a few times. Uh, what else? If you look, I also have these uh, double basses playing the, the, the bass part, as one would expect. Have these loaded in surround. And uh, you can see them playing there, being played on this virtual instrument. Um, okay, let's just, let's just watch the music being played, because it's pretty cool. It's really cool, like, writing the score and then watching it being played back to you and realizing that you made this. I actually realized I'm not showing you guys the whole score because there seems to be more stuff down there. It doesn't, I don't have anything there until much later in the song, but uh, I will just pause it right now and zoom out. There we go, that seems to be everything. So we'll press play again. And uh, while I'm writing this, there's usually a lot of uh, rewinding and listing. Like, Probably like 75% of the time I spent composing is just rewinding 
listening to what I've already written and then like seeing if I like what it is and then experimenting with it. For example, right now I can start experimenting. That low piano is me playing around on my keyboard. So I can hear it played back while the song is being played to me. Sorry about this ghetto recording, uh, it's the only thing I have available right now and some of you asked to see how I composed, so yeah. Uh, I think it still, still gets the point across, you can see all the important parts. One of the uh, limitations of this version of Finale that I have is that you can only load 24 of these uh, staves at any one into one um, file, and um, the best way to get around that is to put multiple tracks into uh, each one using the different layers, and then using another feature, which I haven't shown you guys yet, but I will right now. It's called the Instrument List. And then here in the instrument list, I can um, control which layer goes to which channel of the virtual instrument. If you recall, there were, I, sorry, I didn't show you, but there was, I think, 16 different channels inside each, each uh, virtual instrument port, which is uh, what's here, each one of these, I guess I, I call a port. I just made that up right now, I don't know what they're called, but I'm going to call them port. And then so, basically when this says channel 1, it means that it's being played through the first channel of this port. So I, I have to basically coordinate these different um, ports and channels to get what I want. And uh, before when I didn't know how to use the software, I didn't know that there were uh, multiple channels inside each port. So I would try and load like, I would fill up all the ports pretty quickly and then I'd didn't have enough instruments to write pretty complex songs, but now I've learned how to use it better. So if you look, this is, uh, we're getting closer to the climax of the song, and this is where the fun begins. So this is the fast cello. I will zoom in, because it's cool. Oh yeah, and the, the reason there's two piano, uh, things here is because I needed better sound control, and, uh, if I wanted to do it on one, I'd have to move this into a different layer, but there's no convenient feature that I can just copy and paste it over. So I didn't want to spend the time doing that, so I just put in a new uh, staff. But okay, so here we go. Wait, 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 no, don't, here we don't go. Ah, that's not good. Okay. There we go, that's good. Okay, so let's, let's play. Okay, so here, here's where the choir comes in. These are tenors. And if, if you notice, I, whenever I bring in a new instrument, I always do this. But I think it helps it flow. I always start it quietly and move it in about two bars before the uh, main part starts. And uh, these are, this is also a choir, this line here, the second line. It's uh, boys, the recording of boys singing. And I, I also kind of got lazy here in this uh, tenor line, because it was uh, pretty late in the morning and I hadn't slept yet. I still haven't slept, but almost like 24 hours later, but that's, that's another issue. I, I just I just made it uh, whole notes. And 
kind of nice ending there. That's a bit too loud, but uh, I already wrote the song and I don't want to change it now. So yeah, and then basically, when I write music, it's a lot of this, and then a lot of erasing stuff, a lot of experimenting, a lot of listening to the same thing over and over and over again, making sure it's perfect, putting the right, uh, like, what do you call it, articulations on things. For example, I could tell to play all these notes staccato instead of legato. Let's see if an example. Let's see if it'll work. I don't think it worked. Uh, maybe it's because I don't. I'm using the virtual instrument and not Finale's built-in sounds. Oh, that's another thing. So if you want to see what this what my um, score would have sounded without the virtual instruments, I'm going to have it play through MIDI, which is what it normally would play with, because uh, I had to buy these virtual libraries externally. They didn't come with Finale. So let's let's listen. Sounds like a computer game. This is where I started though, back in the day. <laughs> it's just entertaining to listen to, it's, it's a completely different song. You know, I think it sounds cooler the other way. What do you guys think? I think you agree. So let's go back. Isn't that much better? Alright, we've already seen the piano part and it mostly repeats for the whole thing. So I'm going to go focus on the... Uh, the uh, viola because that, th that part actually changes a lot throughout the song. Um, by the way, just this sec this uh, section for the viola, starting here until it repeats again, it took just 12 hours to write by itself. 12 hours. Sorry the camera is shaking so much, my hands are very unsteady. This is one of my favorite parts of the song, this uh, viola section right here. The key to writing music that works well together is well, at least for me, is layering it. So I, I, the piano part was there first, and then I experimented with um, the viola until I found a tune that one sounded nice, two fit the emotion that I was trying to convey with the song, and then three I could actually do. Because it's coming up with a tune on the piano is one thing, and then putting it in finale is quite another challenge because you have to figure out these rhythms. And then you see how there's like this random uh, 16th note, then 8th note, and then like that happens a lot. That's because 
how the virtual instrument is set up is that it doesn't start playing fast enough. So I basically have to micromanage how w the exact time it starts playing at, so that I it s synchronizes with the piano. Oh, just to, just to show you guys what would happen if I had a wrong note in here. Let's say I made a mistake while writing this and then I just put in a bunch of random notes here to mess it all up. And then, I don't know, let's turn this into like an eighth note. Uh, turn that into an eighth note. Now let's just listen to this bar again. So what bar is that? That's 133. Let's, let's just go back and hear it. Wasn't that lovely? So the reason I listen to it over and over again so much is that I can catch the mistakes a lot easier. And like... Well, I guess I'm going to say I don't usually make that many mistakes of that nature. I'm pretty careful what I want to write. And that's part of the reason why it took so long. This song took about 75 hours to write from the time I started to uh, the time I finished. But I think it was worth it because uh, it's one of my best songs. So I think I ended everything. Uh, we were at bar 133. So, where's my mouse? There it is. Let's play. Another important thing for writing good music is to listen to like other songs or like music that's normally written for that instrument because I, I come from a piano background so I have no idea like how violas actually played. I don't know anything about violas but like I listen to how other composers write music for it and like what I think sounds good and then that's why there's like this uh, varying melody that is being played with like quarter notes and eighth notes and 16th notes and so on. Oh, oh, this transition. This, this, this was one of my favorite parts. I was so happy when I wrote it. Let's, let's hear that again. Let's make it a louder. Right here. And it's like the little differences in the song like that that take away its repetitiveness because like this is there was a lot of copy and paste that happened for this song but uh i think it at the end it turned out that it wasn't too repetitive because i i made slight changes here and there and like that's the key to not having a repetitive song because it's really difficult to come up with something original that still fits in the uh I don't know, the emotion that you're trying to convey with the song. So that's why I like copy and paste, because I don't have to worry about that. I just do the same thing again. This is where the fun begins. 
Crazy violas. And fun on the piano. Oh, by the way, this isn't actually playable by one piano. My music's never really playable, and I don't consider playability as a factor at all. I just care if it sounds good or not. And for example, with a uh I think this line here, it's, I don't know, it says trombone here, but I think I put cellos in there. And like, I, you actually can't hear it for most of the song, but it, it like fills up those lower frequencies. So it sounds more, I don't know, like, there's more of a continuous spectrum of sound hitting you, for lack of a better way of putting it. Yeah, so that's how I usually go about writing music, and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys start writing your own music. Uh, I can give you some tips to start if you want. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, now please go share this song with your friends, because it means a lot to me. See you guys later.